First time I've had a drink in a ski shop. So you know those cartoon cannonball bombs? Apparently people in Japan have been bringing them to ski resorts. I'll show you what I mean. The fresh powder snow is undoubtedly the biggest draw to Naseko, but there are plenty of other reasons to visit. Here are nine cool things about Naseko. Rhythm Japan is a ski and snowboard store that was only steps away from our hotel. What makes it so cool? Well, for starters, they have a bar in the store. You can grab a drink while you shop or wait for your equipment to be tuned. They have sleek architecture. Creative murals. And unique merch. Actually, it's not the first time for drinks in the ski store. When we were in Cerro Catedral in Argentina, the store owner bought a shot of Jägermeister. That was a good time too. But this is actually sold by the store, so that's new. Who knew Naseko had their own food truck scene? We certainly didn't. But when we began exploring Gran Harafu, we stumbled upon a food truck. Actually, a whole bunch of them. With enough options to satisfy even the most picky person in your group. It smells good. You may find yourself returning more than once. But hey, the hazard of being in the Seiko? You may have to brush away the snow to read the menu. We will be back tomorrow night for that. If you're used to the spacious chairlifts of North America and Europe, the Seiko has something for you. The single seat chairlift. About 400 square inches underneath your rear is all that separates you from potential fall to serious injury. No safety bar, no backrest, no footrest. Sound intimidating? All right, let's get on the single lift. It's actually pretty easy. Just slide right up, grab the pole, and sit down. All right, pretty cool. It's surprisingly comfortable and steady. Mount Yote is an active stratovolcano up to 100,000 years old and one of the highest peaks in Hokkaido. And Mount Yote last erupted in the 10 hundreds, so we're either overdue or we're pretty safe. Whether represented in court or the real thing, it's a commanding presence always visible as you ski and board Naseko. an iconic peak that you could say is Japan's version of the Matterhorn. Time for lunch. With so many international visitors, Naseko has an impressive variety of lunch options, like here, Mid-Mountain and Grand Harafu, a vegetable stew sort of thing with rice and fried chicken. Or here, at the Hanazono base, ramen, and plenty of Southeast Asian options, which you can explore inside the brand new Edge Cafeteria. Or here, at the Gran Naseko base. A chicken burger, pizza, and yo, don't judge. Yes, this is mine, I have it. So maybe you prefer Castal? Naseko has night skiing. Okay, night skiing is not unique. But with Naseko's constant snowfall, it's like you're in a dark, snowy suit. 
And while not much snow fell while we were there, we did have the mountain to ourselves. It was the beginning of COVID and many countries were prohibited from traveling already, leaving us the only ones on the slope at night. The nice thing about night skiing right now is that there are so few people out, you can go fast. Check it out, there's nobody here. The Icon Pass is a multi-mountain lift pass that works at many resorts in North America and Europe. And guess what? The Seiko is the only resort in Japan that currently accepts the pass. So if you've got the Icon Pass, simply take it to the ticket counter, show it to them, and they'll give you a pass that will work on their lift system. Boom! You now have access to some of the best snow in the world without paying anything more. Japanese candy! Now, Japanese candy is obviously not unique to the Seiko, but when in Japan, why not do a sampling of their take on things? It could be ramen, beef, or in this case, candy, because I like it. This is a sample of how the taste test went. Got a whole assortment of Japanese candy here. I have no idea what it is, although I do have a slight clue based on the pictures. These what might be caramel or chocolatey. All I was told was that it's sweet. Looks like it's gonna be kind of sticky. You could probably cement together bricks with this. It's like very difficult to break. Just a sweet flavor. Not caramel, not chocolate, now it's stuck to my fingers. I'm not sure what to say about this. If you like interesting candy, this could be your bet. And then you have individually wrapped marshmallows, which I found very intriguing. Why would you individually wrap a marshmallow? This one has a picture of Winnie the Pooh. Gooey and tough. More like a mochi. A little hint of strawberry. Last but not least, I think this is gum. Got a strawberry and what I think must be grapes. They're pink on the outside with a little white center on the inside. Let's see if this is actually gum. This seems to be gum. A very subtle flavor of strawberry. Now I'm not sure if it's gum. It's really breaking apart, which gum doesn't do. The texture is something between gum and starburst. I'm not going to swallow it though, because I'm not sure if it's gum or something like a starburst. I swallowed it. It's not gum. I think I actually like these Starburst-like candies the best. All the powder from yesterday is tracked up, but the snow might be pretty good over here. So traverse over like everybody's doing, and maybe we can find some good snow. Up here, there's some people hiking even higher. I'm not in good enough shape to do that. So I'm just happy going straight over there after this little hike from the lift. I gotta traverse a little bit. The goal is to get over here as far as we can go. Some fellow traversers here, but I'm gonna keep going all the way over there. actually. It's a little bit heavy, it's not cruddy, but it's also not light fluffy powder. Now I've got to figure out when I start heading right. So I see a little cat track down there, but I'm not sure if that's going up or down. And I don't want to get stuck hiking, so I think I'm going to head to the right. I came down right about here. Chasing a bitch. What do you do? Don't let go. Chasing a bitch.